Oops. Do that and that. G'day. <laughs> Sorry. G'day everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Bowditch. Today I wanted to share uh, 10 things um, that I learned whilst I, was, whilst I was working at Facebook which can help you grow your small business, your um, perhaps more modestly sized business on Facebook, but the same principles still apply and a lot of these things are really handy to, to think about going forward in building your own small business, right? So the first thing I learned really was to think audaciously, you know, to be audacious, to be bold. The vision and the, the mission of that business, that company is so grand and so big that not only do people come on board and want to be part of it and people think they can't live without it, right? That's how people feel, some people feel about Facebook. But also, they can't, um, you know, they, can, they feel like they're part of it once they're inside it. So if you have a, a team of people working with you or for you and you want to really galvanize that team around your mission, boldness and audacity is a, is a great way to get that done, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to think like a hacker, Right, and so what I mean by that is not like a hacker into you know ASIO's computers or whatever, but to think about well, what have we built? What's working? What's potentially not working? What could be done a whole lot better potentially in a different way? Let's do it that way. Um, or you know things have never been quite right with this one particular product or whatever. Let's let's build on that. Let's change what is what they're doing with it and let's make it you know a bit more useful or a bit more modern or a bit more what the customers want or, or whatever it might be, right? So that's the second thing. Uh, the third thing is um, the idea of moving quickly. So, and what I mean by that is, so when I started at Facebook, the, the kind of unofficial motto of the place was to move fast and break things. And that didn't quite sit up well after a while because even though you're moving really quickly, we sort of started to take on the mentality more of, well, let's move fast and build things, you know, build things that, that meet... Uh, objections, build things that meet um, market gaps or whatever that we've that we've ascertained or that we've discovered by moving quickly. And so, what I mean by that, in terms of what what I would like to share with you today, in in, in you know, how you should perhaps move fast or move quickly in your own business is potentially you need to move fast to hire. You need to move fast to potentially fire. Um, you know, as long as that's done kindly. Um, you know, to, to keep changing things. You don't want to MySpace yourself out of the market. You don't want to be so stagnant and so kind of predictable and the way it's always been, it's you know, appealing to the same people it's always appealed to forever and ever and ever because that will be the soonest, the, the easiest way for you to crash and burn and become, you know, um, unreliable and, and unwanted, basically, in the market. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's an important thing to think about, you know, are we moving quickly? Are we moving so quickly that people are like, oh God, I wish you would stop changing things all the time because that was a big complaint we had all the time at Facebook. And yet, when if we weren't moving quickly and changing things, then we would be MySpaced out of, the, out of the market. So it's kind of a juggling act a little bit. Fourth one is, and this is one I bang on a lot about, the notion that you must test and test and test and then test again. You know, the amounts of things that we... And, and Facebook still tests in the marketplace that they'll never launch, they'll never ship it. It'll never actually be part of the product offering, but the only way to find out what works and what doesn't is to test the market. Opinions, particularly op opinions of really subjective people inside projects are, are fucking useless. You know, the market has to, you're not building a product, you're not building a business for yourself. You're building a business or a product for your customers and for the market. And it's too easy to get caught up in our subjective view of, oh, I think it's great, and I love this color, I love this feature, I, this is my baby, you know. And, and often, you know, if I have to tell someone in a startup uh, world or small business world that, you know, their their website sucks or their business sucks, or, you know, not, I wouldn't say their business sucks, but, you know, they're, 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 their offering's not quite right or they need to change things or whatever. And it's like I've told them their baby's ugly, you know, people don't, people don't handle it very well. So that's because we're so ingrained in it, we're so immersed in ourselves that we can't see the wood from the trees. So think about, you know, are you testing with the market all the time? Are you letting a little bit out to see how it goes before you go full launch? The idea of gradual rollout of features and or products is a really sound way to be able to build a really sound product catalog or a really sound business because... You're just letting things out, testing the market in a 1% rollout, 10% rollout, whatever it is, female-only rollout, male-only rollout, whatever it might be. 
Um, it's a really good way of being able to go, okay, we're, we're pushing it out, we're pushing it out, but we're not going to go boom just yet until we know it doesn't suck or it doesn't break or it isn't full of bugs or, or whatever it might be, right? Number five, you see I've written them over here, so I apologize for <laughs> looking away. Number five is my favorite saying of all time is done is better than perfect. Um, perfectionist, I'm not going to pick on you today. Uh, this is going to be the non-picking on perfectionist day for once in my, uh, in my content. But um, you know, just really think about, well, done is better than perfect. And, and when I was at Facebook, we thought about that a lot because you had to just put things out and let the market speak to you and say, you know, that is not great. Or this could be better. Or, geez, I wish we'd do this. Or... What happened to that feature that we pulled or, or whatever it might be, right? So think about just getting things out there and then letting the, the, letting the public, letting the market decide from there um, you know, how to tweak it towards perfection, but you'll never, ever, ever, ever attain that. So just go as, as far as you can, right? Number six, be open and transparent. This is hard for businesses. Um, it's been hard for me up until a little while ago, but now I'm, some people... Tell me I'm too open <laughs> about stuff, and uh, but you know the more honest, the more open and transparent you can be with your market, the more they're going to be bound to your vision, right? The more they're going to be really happy to connect with you, to help you build your own business, to do whatever it is you want to do. Um, if you're hidden and secretive, and you know cloistered and and whatever, people don't want to attach to that. People hate that. You know that's 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 the big banks, that's insurance, that's you know. Energy minerals product uh, companies, you know, that's how they think about that. They don't want to think of a small business or a startup in that way. They want it to be approachable and touchable and reachable and open and transparent. Number seven is everybody owns it and everybody is a spokesperson. At Facebook, everyone from, you know, no matter what role you feel at that company, you know everything there is to know about the business, what's coming, uh, what's working, what's not working, where the money is, where the money isn't, how much money there is. All of those things are really great things to know as an employee because it it does two things. It empowers you as an employee to be an advocate for that business and to speak for it. Now, I, I was a spokesman at that business, so I did a lot of um, speaking like this as well as in events and stuff, wearing the shirt, and I had to be able to speak from my heart and say, I love this business. I love what we're doing. I'm, I challenge it, and we make mistakes, and I don't I don't love everything about it, but the things we are doing are the, in, especially in the small business space that I was working in, we, I was loving that. You know, we we did we made real significant change, and we were really helping a lot of businesses build their business, and that was wonderful, right? And so, and I think that came across in my advocacy and my evangelism for the product and the, and the business when I spoke. But so that's the first thing. But the second thing is, it just helps people drink the Kool Aid. Like if you've if you've got a business, and and. Say you have a team working for you or you have employees, even if they're outsourced employees, offshore or whatever, the more you make them a spokesman for the business and the more you empower them within your business, the better advocates they're going to be and, and the more raving fans they're going to be. You know, the more raving fans you have within your business, the more raving fans you'll potentially create outside of that business. Um, not in a cheesy way or a, or a disingenuous way, but like an actual real authentic way. People do love to be part of something and they love to be part of something bigger than themselves. So if your business is that, uh, then great. And I challenge you to think about, you know, is, this, is that what your business is? If you're a business owner and you have a team working with you or for you, people report to you, is, this the, is that the ship you run? You know, do they feel like they're part of your business? Do they feel like they're empowered and, and really connected within your business or do they feel like they're just working for you? Because you're not going to get the best out of, this, out of the ladder, right? Pretty simple. Number eight is think scale. You know, everything, when I was, when I was uh, running small business operations for Australia and New Zealand for Facebook, uh, for a long time, it was just me. And so I had to think about, well, what, what, um, what little things can we tinker with? What, where can I best spend my time? Which events should I speak at and which events should I politely decline? You know, all those things are a matter of thinking scalably. And, and it's really important if you're a small business or startup, and it's really, really important if you're a sole trader. If you're the only person in your business who can make those decisions and make time for that stuff, then you have to think about where is the best use of my time, which markets, countries, dollars, like, like currencies or whatever, are the best to, to migrate out and grow out into as we scale the business. And, and don't, you know, I, I always thought to myself, you know, and, and we always thought in the business, don't, I, I never made a decision that just suited or just worked for 
the Australian market. You know, I, I, I thought often, often about the Australian and New Zealand market combined, but then I would think about well, Asia Pacific and then the global business as well, because it's too easy to get sidetracked into thinking, well, I want everyone to be happy who's around me, or this is the market that I live in, or these are the people that I sell to or whatever. But what you really want to think about is acquisition. You know, how much further can you, can you be at? How much further can you grow? How much further can you scale your business? Number nine is along the same lines. What little changes can you make that have big impact? So again, when I was, when we had a very, very small team working with me um, in the small business, but we had literally tens of thousands of accounts of, of people who were advertising on Facebook in small business and startup, we would have to think about well, how do we pull levers that make very, very small changes, but very, very big impactful, uh, uh, sorry, very, very small you know, adjustments that make very, very big impacts. You know, um, can we think about currency fluctuations in a different way? Can we uh, present, for instance, uh, in the Asia Pacific, that where I was working in the Asia Pacific region, which I worked in, um, a lot of the people who were accessing Facebook on their phone were doing it on a feature phone, not on a smartphone. So we had to think about, well, how is the platform presented? How does it look on a feature phone? How do people with feature phones use it? as opposed to people with smartphones and so on. And, and we could make tiny little changes that made actually really, really big revenue changes because we were thinking scalably the whole time. And I think that's a good thing for even the smallest business to think about as well. And then finally, and, and this is, you know, I think this is super important for small business, especially uh, in startup, is when you think about humans, that will convert into dollars. If you focus on revenue... And do not focus on the user experience. Now, this is not just online or gaming or you know, online platforms or websites, but any user experience within your business. Once you lose sight of that, you might have the best product or the best business or the most bloody most funded startup in, of all time. But if you forget about the user experience, then you're going to go down the shitter real quick. But if you always focus your thinking and your decision making on Humans first, that will convert into a really strong bottom line. Because humans talk to humans, humans share things, humans join platforms, blah, 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 blah. But when the human element is taken out of it, or when you don't care about how humans interact with your business or your product or your brand or your products or whatever, you know, your features, then you will lose sight of what you're really in the game for. And that is to make people happy, to leave an impression. People will always remember how you make them feel. They'll forget what you do. They'll forget what you say. They'll forget what you build. They'll forget how your website looked three iterations ago. They'll forget the product that you brought out, which sucked. But they'll always remember that you were building something for them. Always, always, always build for humans. Treat humans well. Think about humans in your product and your business development. And that will convert into a really strong bottom line from them. Once you lose track of that, you are in the shitter. All right, so yeah, I'll, I'll end with that because I think it's a nice way to end. Think about humans first and humans become dollars. But the, other two, the, the converse is, is not true. All right, so thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far, it's 13 minutes. It's pretty long for me, so I apologize if you had to sit through that and you weren't loving it. <laughs> but um, if you have any, any comments or whatever, yeah, hit them up downstairs uh, under this. Um, that would be great. Other people might read and interact and think and learn from that as well. If you've got something that, you know, you've come from a big environment or a big brand as well and learned something which, which is convertible and, and uh, you know, scalable down into, into even the smallest business, um, then, you know, share it, right? Knowledge is power, but if you don't share the knowledge, then it's worth fuck all. So think about sharing stuff in the comments below for other people to read. Just a quick recap, right? One to ten. Be audacious. Be a hacker. Move fast. Not necessarily in break things, but just move fast, right? Test and test and test and test again. Test and measure all the time. If you are not measuring it, you are not managing it. If you can't measure it, don't do it, right? Done is better than perfect, amen, brother. Done is better than perfect. Uh, be open and transparent. Everybody in the business should own your business and be a spokesman for it. They should feel empowered and strong in their advocacy of, of the business they work in, right? Uh, think scale, small changes, big impact. And humans, humans, humans. Have a great day no matter where you are. Uh, I love your feedback and, and thank you very much for following me and, and for watching these, uh, watching these broadcasts and being a supporter of my content. I really appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. See ya.